I'm Angela Willis, and on today's episode of Women That Kill, we look at Susan Basso, who was convicted in the 1998 murder of Louis Buddy Musso, a mentally disabled man. The case helps us better understand why people become more aggressive in groups. This is also known as group aggression. This is important because in countries around the world, groups commit more violent acts than individuals do. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe and like this video. Susan was born in 1954 in New York City. She was one of eight children. Her uncle, Robert Garrow, was a serial rapist who went on an 18-day killing spree. During her teenage years, Susan married James Peake. By the time she was 19 years old, she had a daughter. Then one year later, she had a son. In 1982, James was convicted of molesting their nine-year-old daughter and was sentenced to 10 years in jail. After he was released, James rejoined Susan and their kids, including the daughter who the family moved to Houston, Texas, where they changed their last name to O'Malley. Susan worked as a security guard at an apartment complex. Within one to two years, Susan's marriage to James ended, not because he previously molested their daughter, but because she had fallen in love with a man named Carmine Basso. She never divorced James, so she was unable to marry Carmine, who moved in with her into her home. Despite not being able to marry Carmine, she changed her surname to Basso and began to refer to Carmine as her husband. Carmine died in 1997. After his death, Susan returned to New Jersey for a short time. While in New Jersey, she met Buddy. Buddy had been married and had a son by his wife, but she had died in 1980 from cancer. Buddy had learning challenges. He had the intellect of a seven-year-old child, but was able to care for himself. He lived in an assisted living house and worked as a bagger at a local grocery store. He also received a small amount of social security benefits. At age 58, he met Susan, who was 43 at the time. They started a long distance relationship and he moved to Texas on June 14, 1998 to marry her. Within two weeks of moving to Texas, Buddy stopped communicating with his friends and family. 16 days after his arrival, Buddy's dead body was found by a jogger. The police department ruled that Buddy's death was due to multiple blunt impact trauma. The police began to investigate his death and quickly became aware of Susan because she came to the police station to report Buddy missing as soon as the news reported that a body had been discovered. It was an apparent attempt to distance herself from Buddy's killing. Police began to question her. Eventually, Susan gave a partial confession. She told police in a written statement that she had drove Buddy's body to the dump site, but did not kill him. She was arrested and charged. The perpetrators included Susan's son, James, Bernice Miller, and her children, Craig and Hope, and Hope's fiance, Terrence. During the trial, the prosecutor relied on statements made by Susan, her accomplices, and autopsy reports. The prosecutor argued that Buddy was forced to do chores for the group, who had beaten and injured him the weeks leading up to the murder. Susan's son James told police that Buddy was killed at Bernice's apartment, beaten and burned with cigarettes. The prosecutors proved Susan was directly involved in the murder of Buddy. Susan, who at the time weighed more than 300 pounds, repeatedly jumped on Buddy, who had been forced onto his hands and knees. The attack broke many of his ribs. The group put Buddy in a bathtub filled it with strong kitchen cleaners such as bleach and used a wire brush to scrub evidence off of Buddy's body. They put clothes on Buddy before dumping his dead body. The group used belts, baseball bats, cigarettes, boots, hands, and feet to beat Buddy to death over a three to four day period. An autopsy report showed that Buddy had at least 17 cuts to his head, 28 cuts and cigarette burns on his back, bruises all over his body, a skull fracture, a fractured bone in his neck, 14 broken ribs, and two dislocated vertebrae. What's interesting is that Susan or any of her accomplices had any criminal record for violent crimes. People who knew them said that they were not the violent people. So what made them be so cruel to Buddy and torture and kill him in such a painful and brutal fashion? This type of violence that occurs with a group of people who on their own would never behave violently is called group aggression. Group aggression is an essential concern for societies around the world. It focuses on the emergence of group conflict and aggressions. The theory helps to explain groups associated with aggression, such as street gangs, hate groups, terrorist organizations. 
Psychologists developed the group aggression theory from a field study done in 1954 called Robber's Cave, in which two groups of 12-year-old boys became hostile and aggressive towards each other when they were placed into a competitive situation. Since the study, more information and studies have been done about this type of aggression, especially with youth. Studies of young people in gangs have found that members often will put the group before their individual selves. In a group, individuals lose their sense of self and personal responsibility, self-restraint, and social comparisons, resulting in a mob-like and aggressive behavior. Understanding group aggression explains why the individuals acted so aggressively as a group. Prosecutors also presented a compelling motive. Evidence showed that Susan took out a life insurance policy on Buddy and made herself the sole beneficiary. As a result, Susan was found guilty and sentenced to death by lethal injection. In February 2014, Susan was executed. When asked by the warden if she had any last words, she said, no, sir. And she was pronounced dead 11 minutes later after the drug was administered. Since capital punishment was resumed in 1976, Susan became the 14th woman to be executed in America. Executions of women are uncommon in the United States and only five women in Texas have ever been put to death since the Supreme Court resumed capital punishment. Women represent less than 1.2% of the 1,500 executions performed in the United States since 1976. In general, both the death sentence rate and the death row population remains very small for women compared to men. At the end of every video, I like to look at the person's, the killer's zodiac sign to see if I can get more insight into who the killer was. Susan was born May 15, 1954. That makes her a Taurus. The significant characteristics of the zodiac sign are that they love routine, they're committed to their comfort, they like to be in control, and they're patient and steady. But they can also be materialistic. But they can also be great listeners and very dependable. The bad traits of this zodiac sign is that they can be very materialistic and money driven. Sometimes they are overly determined to achieve material success and they are not immune to greed. They can be indifferent to the needs of others if they are motivated to achieve their own goals. I think the characteristics of a Taurus accurately describe Susan's, um, especially the determination of material success and greed indifference to the needs of others, the fact that she killed for money or allowed the man who molested her daughter to rejoin the family. So I would say she really follows along and her behavior kind of reflects that of her zodiac sign. If you want to learn more about women that kill, check out some of my other videos. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for a new episode and have a great day. Bye everyone.